small little square you get. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. Yes, I do. Miss Stodgill, would you state your full name to the court? My name is Cordelia Stodgill. And where do you work, Miss? Spalding County Correctional Institution. And how do you know Joseph Rosenbaum? We used to be co workers. I want to take you back to November 17th. Did there come a time where you received a call for Joseph? Uh, yes, ma'am. And who was it? It was Joseph's wife, Jennifer. And how, what, did, what did you do when you got that call? Uh, when I got that phone call, she said that she needed to speak with her husband. I tried to transfer that phone call to him. He was uh, posted in control too. I was unable to transfer the call because we had a new phone system and I wasn't familiar with it. Uh, when the phone ca call came back to me, uh, she said it was an emergency and she really needed to talk to him. So I instructed her to hang the phone up and that I would call him and have him to call her. What was her demeanor like when she um, she was sound like she was panicking. Ask you about this. Have you had occasion to see the girls or talk about the girls with Joseph and Rose? Well, no, ma'am. I never met the girls, but um, yes, I did talk. Joseph did talk to me about the girls sometimes. And how? What was his demeanor when he talked to you? Um. About Christmas, let's say. One day, I asked him, had he fallen in love with the girls yet? Uh, their ages, they, at that age, they do such cute things. Uh, and he smiled and said, well, the younger one is clingy. And then he said, well, because when I get home, she's right under me every step that I make. Did he talk to you at all about Christmas? Uh, yes, they was. Uh, we was talking about Christmas decorations. She had pulled this Christmas decoration down early, way before Thanksgiving. Uh, he said he was going to put it up early because they was having Thanksgiving dinner at his house, and he thought the girls would really be excited about the Christmas decorations. Thank you, Ms. Lakita Bellingsley. And uh, how how do you um, where where are you employed? Um, Clayton County Division of Family and Children's Services. Miss Billingsley, um, do you know who Millie Place is? I do. Uh, and do you know who um, Mrs. Peggy Banks is? I do. Um, I want to talk to you about um, Miss Banks and Millie. Um, when you were uh, overseeing Millie at that point in time, uh, what years were they? Um, I received the case in February of 2017, and then I um, transferred the case to the adoption unit in J October of 2018. And um, you had occasion to, to document a lot of what you, what you did, correct? Correct. Um, was it part of your practice to make make good record of what you saw and what you heard? Correct. Uh, is that what you're taught to do? Yes. And um, let me ask you this. Um, was there ever any complaints about Millie being coached by, um, by or by Peggy Banks? Yes. And can you tell us what, tell us a little bit about that? Um, there were some instances where um, I received information from the service providers that were doing the um, transport, the supervised um, visits between um, Millie and her siblings, where the um, grandmother attended the visits. Um, I in your notes an instance where you were concerned that Millie was being coached? Yes. Um, 
did, uh, in fact, Millie's father complain of Millie being coached? Jacob, please. I don't recall, but if it's in my if it's in the records, then yes, that was something that was um, brought to my attention that I documented. Okay. Um, Peggy Banks was uh, someone you had to work with, correct? Correct. And um, at the time that you were dealing with her, she was trying to get Millie herself, correct? Yes. And um, she, what did she tell you about who should or should not adopt Millie? It's Peggy Banks. If we move on. However, that would have been with a foster parent. So the department's um, first priority is to find a relative for the kids, which really was placed with her uh, maternal great-grandmother. Um, so we were solely focused on her remaining with her, if possible. Um, however, there might have been, there was a conversation that was had um, between myself as well as um, an adoption supervisor that went out to the home with me to complete an adoption consideration evaluation. And if I'm not mistaken, within that um, visit that we had at the home and um, the completion of the adoption consideration waiver, uh, Ms. Banks did explain to us that if she was not the one that um, could adopt Millie, she would like her to be adopted by um, church-like individuals. Did she say to you that she wanted Millie adopted by white Christians? I'm not sure about the the white part but yes she did want her to be adopted by a christian like family you're not sure uh, would it help you to refresh your recollection if i show you the document yes <laughs> Yes. What did she tell you she wanted? Um, from that, from the documentation, um, I documented that she stated that she did want her to be adopt, by, adopted by people at her church, which would have been white Christians. Um, you also made notations that Peggy was teaching Millie to react negatively to people, correct? Yes, those were my observations at the time. And uh, Peggy told Millie uh, that her aunt Elaine Place was part of the reason her sister was killed. Isn't that what she said? Yes, that was brought to me by, um, that was brought to me in, a, in visits, multiple visits that I had with the child, Millie. It's fair to say that what she was, that um, Peggy was talking about the death of of uh, Layla, her sister. Correct. And she was talking about the death to Millie. Yes. And she was telling her things that were inappropriate for a child to hear. Yes. Uh, and you made a note that you wanted to talk to Peggy about brainwashing the child against other individuals. Yes. And uh, you also made a note that lying for Millie was an issue. Yes. And uh, Millie was also climbing on furniture. Correct. And at one point, she's stacking chairs on the bed to reach up into the ceiling area, correct? Yes, that was reported to me. Um, she had, when you were supervising her, she had cuts and scrapes on her elbow 
and she told you she did that, got that from doing flips on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And uh, on another occasion, you noticed a red mark, and she said she fell, correct? Yes. And this is in 2018? Correct. And when you visited on one of your monthly visits to Miss Banks, uh, she reported to you that Millie told Whoppers, correct? Correct. And what does Whoppers mean to you? Um, after doing some further um, investigation, <laughs> she Whoppers meant to her telling lies. Okay. And um, Miss Banks, in addition to saying Millie has should be adopted by white people, said that she cannot be adopted by same-sex couple. Correct. That's correct. And Miss Banks basically um, told you she wanted to homeschool. Millie. She did mention that. And then Millie told you she wanted homeschooling, correct? Correct. Uh, it's fair to say that you were concerned about the influence that Miss Banks was having on Millie. Yes, initially. And uh, didn't you say that she is being traumatized? Stay. What did you say about uh, Peggy? What did, how did you characterize what Peggy was doing to Millie? Um, it was traumatizing to the child as there were um, a lot of concerns about um, age appropriate conversations with the child as well as the child had been through a lot of trauma already that was um, observed by myself as well as um, concluded by the um, therapist that I put in place for her so um, within that I was trying to make the situation that she was going through being in foster care and legal in, in foster care as less traumatic as possible and Peggy was uh, talking about <coughs> what was Peggy talking about with, with, to Millie with regards to Millie's biological mother during monthly visits, there were some conversations when I um, spoke with the child alone in her room. There were some conversations surrounding um, the mom being in, unstable and cannot care for her, as well as there were some conversations um, about the mom basically, I should say, living from house to house with different people, and then um, the mom was inconsistent with the visits with the child as well. So the mom, let's, let's unpack that one by one. The mom, first of all, was inconsistent with her visits. She was not coming to the visits on a regular basis, was she? Correct. In fact, there were times where she couldn't be found. Yes. Now, uh, you say that Miss Banks was saying inappropriate, not age appropriate things. Did she ever tell Millie that her mother, her biological mother was strung out? Yes, that was something that the child disclosed to me during monthly visits. Did Peggy Banks influence Millie to have visits with her sisters only once a week? Was that a problem you all faced? Um, no, it wasn't Miss Banks um, influencing the child to only have visits with her sibling once a week. The department scheduled the visits once a week, so that was something that we had in place for them. And then as the case um, moved um, forward, we started to have um, weekend visits, longer visits with the child with her siblings at the um, potential foster home that she was going to be moving to with the siblings. You were concerned, were you concerned about uh, adult conversations with Millie? Yes. Were you concerned about Millie lying? Yes. Were, did Nana tell um, <coughs> defects she What did Nana tell defects with regards to who she wants 
Um, was Miss Raven someone that was considered for placement? Yes. And what did what was uh, Nana's concern, or what was Nana happy about this or not? She was. Why is that? What did she say? It's the same sort of thing we talked about. Why was Miss Banks happy about Miss Raven when Miss Raven was being considered? Um, she identified her as a um, friend of hers from the church. And what was there about her that she liked so much? Um, Miss Raven had a family of her own. She had a um, she had younger daughters about the same age as Millie. Um, and to my knowledge. The biggest thing was that she was a friend of the family that Millie knew as well as Miss Banks knew that attended um, the same church as they did. Did she tell you that this woman was a Christian woman with a Christian husband? Correct. What did Millie tell you about how she finds out a lot of information? From her nana, Miss Peggy Banks. And that was told to you by Millie? Correct. Millie was pretty grown up, wasn't she? Yes. And she uh, explained that she got a lot of information from Miss Banks? Yes. There came a time in April of 2018 where Miss Harold came into the picture, correct? Yes. Well, she's been in the picture since I've had the case in 2017. She's the foster parent of the younger two siblings of Millie. Okay, but with regards to Millie, she came into the picture in about 2018, correct? Yes. And Millie was living with her? You recall that? No, she was not living with her in April. She did it. Um, hold on. <clears throat> Yes, she was living with her and Ava. And did Miss Harold ever convey any concern to you about Millie fabricating stories? Yes. Did she tell you that it was happening more frequently? Yes. Millie would be uh, is it fair to say that Millie would be injured uh, from playing outside? Scratches, bumps, bruises? There has been incidents where she was, she did um, obtain scratches from being, um, from playing outside. But as far as bruises, no. Um, was one of the goals for Millie to reduce her line or eliminate her line? Yes, that was part of her treatment plan. Thank you, Ms. Billings, and that's all I have. Oh, thank you, Ms. Paul. Ms. Andrews. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Billings. Good morning. Ms. Karen Andrews. I have a few questions for you. You were the case manager in 2017 is that correct i received it in february of 2017. so all the statements that you just discussed with miss mole um, <clears throat> in regards to things that miss banks allegedly told millie about things that had nothing to do with jenner joseph rosenbaum correct correct okay so none of those coaching that was discussed had anything to do with what happened to Millie while in the house of Jennifer and Joseph Rosenbaum, correct? No, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, and so were you aware that prior to Millie living with Peggy Banks and subsequent to November 17 of 2015, Millie did state that Jennifer twisted her arm? I 
I don't recall. Are you aware that prior to Pe to Millie going to live with Peggy, Millie disclosed that Jennifer spanks her with a belt? I don't recall. Were you aware that prior to Millie living with Peggy Banks, Millie told individuals that Joseph would put cream on her bruises when it hurt? I don't recall. And were you aware that prior to Peggy living, uh, to Millie living with Peggy Banks, she expressed that Jennifer would knee her in the stomach? I don't recall. Were you aware that prior to Millie living with Peggy Banks, she told detectives that Jennifer Rosenbaum squeezed Layla's arm, squeezed her leg? I don't know. No. And were you aware that prior to Millie living with Peggy, she explained to detectives that Jennifer Rosenbaum would hold Layla by one arm when coming down the steps, and that was when she was getting in trouble? No. And so the, were you aware that the, that the lies that Millie was stating had to do with her not brushing her teeth? Yes. Okay. And were you aware that the lies had something to do with like not putting her socks on? Yes. Okay. So those are the whoppers that we were, that you mentioned earlier? Correct. Correct. While well, you were um, Millie's case manager in 2017 and 2018 living with Peggy Banks, did Millie ever have any injuries like that, which is in Exhibit 80? You can turn around. No. And as a case manager, if you had seen those injuries to Millie, would you have been concerned? Yes. Would you have been concerned about child physical abuse? Yes. Those, uh, those types of injuries would have actually prompted an investigation. Into the child abuse? Yes. Now it's just it's exhibit 78. Did Millie ever have any injuries that looked like that while she was living with Miss Peggy Banks? No. And have you seen an injury like this on Millie while living with Peggy Banks would that have prompted an investigation? Yes. And would you have had concern for child physical abuse? Yes. Are you aware that um, the research has, has shown that it is harder to coach three and four year olds than older children? Yes. Okay. So you're aware it's harder to coach the younger child? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Ms. Akers. Ms. Ball. I'm aware, Ms. Billingsley, that it can be done. Anything's possible. <laughs> but you yourself complained about Ms. Banks coaching Millie, correct? I did. And you said that it was traumatizing her, correct? Yes. Thank you. What was she coaching her about? Um, and I don't know if coaching is the correct word to use. <laughs> I think it was more so um, the information that was privy to the child. It was, like I stated earlier, it was very, <clears throat> it was not age appropriate. I think it was more so the information that was given to her was stated repetitively to her. So it was more so something that stuck in the child's mind, I should say. So when I would have visits with her, there would be certain questions that I would ask that, she was kind of fearful to answer out of and she would make the response when nana told me such and such or nana told me such and such so i don't know if coaching is the correct word i just think my biggest thing was the conversations were not age appropriate for the child so millie was very clear that she got the information from nana as opposed to seeing it or experiencing it with her own eyes yes okay and those um 
those inappropriate things that she was talking about that was at all ever have anything to do with Jennifer and Joseph Rosenbaum and what happened to Millie? No, the most she ever stated about this case was what was said about um, her aunt, Elaine um, Place. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You step down. And you're excused. Could you please sit down and um, state your name? Takesha Hosley. And Ms. Hosley, where do you work? Um, the Department of Family and Children's Services. And how long have you worked there? Since December 2014. And uh, did you ever come in contact with Millie Place? Yes. And tell us about what year that was that you came in contact with Millie Place. That was, um, I believe, in February of 2016. Okay. Do you recall a time when Millie's mother complained that Millie had a black eye? Yes. And um, was this also around February of 2016? Right. And was she with the Lamberts at that time? Yes, she was. And did the Lamberts also receive the complaint? Um, did it, were they, was it made known to them? Yes. And did Lamberts have complaints of their own uh, about Millie's behavior since she began having regular visits with her mother and great-grandmother? She did. Yes. And was this around the same time that the biological mother complained of a black eye? Yes. And what did Ms. Lambert complain to you about with regards to Millie's contact with her mother and great-grandmother? Response. Your Honor, Millie has testified, and Ms. Banks has testified, and this is just impeachment. An inconsistent statement? She's asking her what Ms. Lambert told her that Millie said. So she's asking about what Ms. Lambert said, so I'm not sure. This is a couple years ago. I will move on and rephrase it in a different way, Judge. Did you have any problems um, with Millie coming back home from visits with her mother and grandmother about what she would say? Um, I'm unaware. I wasn't the, the foster care caseworker on the case. I only went out just the one time to meet with Millie after I was called in for the investigation. Okay. So there was an investigation about the black eye. Right. And uh, did you take Millie from the Lambert home to the hospital? I did. And uh, was this in the wee hours of the morning? Um, it was around, I believe I made it to the home maybe around 7 p.m. And we went to the hospital right after. And uh, did you come home to the Lambert home around 2.30 a.m.? Yes. Did Ms. Lambert tell you uh, that they feared Mr. Lambert would lose his job if his employer found out about the allegations of Millie having a black eye? Yes. Did she... Did they tell you that uh, they would allow Millie to stay for the remainder of the night, that she had to be out the next day? Um, I do remember saying that, well, Ms. Lambert saying that she wanted her gone as soon as possible. I, I don't recall whether it was the next day. Just, I believe, well, I, I don't, I, I really don't remember. I don't um, remember when she said she wanted her gone. Okay. okay, according to my my documentation, um, I it did she did state that she wanted Millie could stay for the remainder of the night, but she wanted me to notify defects immediately that she would have to leave. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So I just want to be sure. So the complaint about this alleged black guy, 
came from Tessa Clinton Daniel. Yes. The mother of a girl, well, two girls, one that had been abused while in foster care and one that had been killed while in foster care. Right. And she saw a mark on her daughter's eye. A mother who had a child that had died while she was in the care of foster parents. Yes. And a mother who had a child that showed up with bruises that were, well, let me ask you first. As an investigator, you can look behind you. If you saw these types of bruises in that state's number 80, what would you characterize those bruises if you saw those on a child? As a, as a caseworker or an investigator, thank you. Well, how would you characterize those injuries that's in state's aid? Can you clarify? What do you mean, how? If you observed a child that had those types of bruises on them, would there be an investigation as to physical abuse? Yes. So Tessa Day and you had a child who had bruises that would be consistent with physical abuse, made a complaint in February about a mark on her daughter's eye. Is that how this all came about? Yes. That you got involved? With, there was a complaint that, that Millie had a black eye, right. And you started an investigation? Yes, ma'am. And you took Millie out of the home of the Lamberts and took her to the hospital? Yes. And what, were you there during the hospital visit? Mm -hmm. Did I was. you observe the injury to Millie's eye? I did. Can you describe that to us? I can't remember which eye it was near, but it, it, was, it looked like a small scratch. So not a black eye, a small scratch? Not in my opinion, no, it was a black eye. And um, then you returned her at 2.30 in the morning to the Lambert's home? Yes. And in fact, Ms. Lambert told you that she was concerned not only just about the allegation, but the constant barrage that she was getting from media. Yes. And she was also concerned about the phone calls from unknown members in regards to Millie Place being in her home. Yes. And the plan was never for Millie to stay with the Lamberts, right? The case was going to be transferred? That's correct. So this was just a temporary setting? Yes, it was. So Ms. Lambert's concern that night was that, I guess, it was just too much for her at that point? Yes. And she did mention her husband's job. She did. Because there was a lot of media surrounding this particular child. Right. And that was one of the concerns that she had that a case um, was being investigated involving the same child in her home. Yes, ma'am. And did you investigate the rest of that case? Um, meaning? Did you substantiate it or unsubstantiate it? It was un unsubstantiated. So in your regards, in gar regards to Ms. Lambert, were there any, was there any substantiation for neglect? No. Or physical abuse? No. Or maltreatment? No. Was Millie removed, well, really was removed because Ms. Lambert asked that she be removed due to all of the garage and the conflict that she was having in regards to Millie being in her home? Well, actually, she was removed. Clayton County went ahead and picked her up the following day. So, so she, the case transferred. So they just finished the transfer that was already in place? Yes. Okay. Nothing further. Isn't it true, Ms. Hosley, that she told you that she was going to the next day, she could stay the night, but she could not stay any longer. Um, she did say she immediately. Mm -hmm. And is it not true that she said that they were concerned about um, that Mr. Lambert would lose his job if his employee out about the allegations? Yes. Thank you. Now, Ash, do you remember her exact words of what you put in your report? Uh, I can't recall the exact words, but. What I put in the documentation is is basically what was said. She was concerned. Miss Lambert was concerned about the the media attention, the phone calls. She was concerned about her husband possibly losing her job, as, his job as well. And she told you that she couldn't stay until the transfer occurred. She needed to be removed before the transfer. Yes. She didn't say the next day. She just said she can't stay here until the transfer. Is right. She did say. She just said that she wanted me to notify my supervisor that she needed to move immediately. Thank you, ma'am. You can step down. Okay. And you're excused. Thank you. Uh, there's no objection. No objection from the defense. No objection from the defense. Um, no objection from the defense.